Hi, my name is Chris Morgan, and I am Senior Minister at Centenary United Methodist Church in Danville, Kentucky. Welcome to Part 3 of 7-Minute Psalms, where we look at some feature of the Psalms in about 7 minutes. Today, we will be looking at the Psalms of Thanksgiving. Now, if you want to know which Psalms these are, I've got nine of them listed for you here. Uh, seven complete Psalms and parts of Psalms 40 and 46. At the center of the Psalms of Thanksgiving is this conviction that God has heard and answered prayer. This conviction that God has heard and answered prayer. And we see that in Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. In Psalm 118, the writer says this, Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. In 138, the writer says this, On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. Here we see examples of worshipers who have prayed to God for some specific need. Maybe it's regarding their own circumstances. Maybe it's regarding their personal health. Maybe it's for their lives to be saved. Sometimes that would be in battle. Sometimes that would be just in dangerous situations. But God has heard their cry. And instead of just going about their business, they remember that God has heard their cry and they express gratitude for whatever it is God has done for them. Physical healing or being rescued from death and battle because of some danger. And they even thank God for the blessing of forgiveness. Now look at this uh, passage from Psalm 32, uh, 1 through 5. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Now pay attention to what happens here, confession and post-confession. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Now, after this failure to confess, after this holding it all in and this guilt and shame that is overcoming, then I acknowledged my sin to you. I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Here we see that the psalmist has this, this weight of guilt and shame upon his shoulders, and with the lack of confession, things get more and more dire. But once he has confessed his sin before God and received this gift of forgiveness, the natural next step is to give thanks to God. Another feature of these psalms is that there is often public expression of what God has done for the writer. Uh, look at Psalm 40, for instance. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and of your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. And so this gratitude is not just a gratitude in the heart. Very often, this thankfulness is expressed in the congregation among God's worshiping people. Another thing that happens among God's worshiping people is that a worshiper will go to the temple precincts and present some kind of offering. So we can see that this thankfulness is related at times to the act of offering a sacrifice. I will offer to you, says Psalm 116, a thanksgiving sacrifice and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Now, just like we spoke a couple of days ago about in the Psalms of Lament, sometimes there are individual 
complaints, and sometimes there are complaints on a national level or a community level. So it is with the Psalms of Thanksgiving. What we've just talked about are generally individual thanksgivings to God. But there are also psalms that offer a category of community thanksgiving to God as well. For example, Psalms 67, 75, 107, 124, 136. One of my favorite psalms of thanksgiving is Psalm 107, which begins with this imperative for whoever is reading or listening to give thanks to God. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Again, don't keep silent. Don't pretend like everything's just going as normal. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Uh, there are four different categories of uh, people that Psalm 107 talks about who should give thanks to the Lord and who God has rescued. Uh, uh, first, there are those who are wandering hungry and thirsty in desert lands and think they're going to die there, and they cry out to the Lord, and God rescues them. There are prisoners in shackles who pray to the Lord and who find deliverance. There are those who are sick, who are wasting away, and they cry out to God, and God saves them. There are sailors on the dangerous seas uh, who, who pray that God might deliver them and God takes them safely through their journey. So these four categories of people in Psalm 107 who should give thanks remind us that God delivers people in all sorts of ways. Psalm 136 repeats again and again the call to give thanks to God. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love it endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. There is this call for the whole community to give thanks for what God has done for us. And as you might imagine, uh, with an agricultural people, uh, there's also this gratitude for the harvest. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. We're living in challenging times. Uh, on Monday, we looked at the Psalms of Lament, these cries of complaint to God. And today, we're looking at Psalms of Thanksgiving, where the writers of these psalms believe that their cry to God, their complaint, their oh God help me moments have been met with God's attentiveness and God's providential cares. We mustn't take life and health and food and security or safety and navigating the everyday challenges of our lives for granted. Sometimes we'll complain to anyone who will listen, but God's people these psalms show us, also have a habit and a history of saying, thank you, Lord, for looking upon me with providence and care. Thanks be to God. And even saying that in public, saying that to their friends, their community in worship, come, hear what the Lord has done for me. I pray today that in your individual life and in our community life, we might find moments of gratitude, moments where we can say to God, Lord, you have met my needs. Thank you. May God's blessing be with you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.